This is going to be a review and a tutorial for the Blackmagic Design Intensity Shuttle. I'm going to start with the tutorial first. What you're seeing is Blackmagic Design's Media Express software. If we go into Log and Capture, you can actually see my Blu-ray player. You're just actually seeing menu options. It's, it's nothing all that great. You can see that the microphone in, input is coming in through the analog audio options of the intensity shuttle. The video is actually coming in through the component uh, inputs instead of the HDMI. I just opted to use component. But if we actually want to capture something, it's pretty simple. I would actually just go in here, hit capture. Oh, it's going to overwrite because I already got, I got a file with the same name that it defaults to, so no big deal. We'll just let it capture for a second. I can actually, you know, kind of move around on here so I'm not just getting, you know, a blank screen all the time. But that that's basically about it. And then you just stop it by hitting capture again. And now if we go to playback, it's just going to play back what I just had done. You're not going to hear the audio coming out because it's coming out my TV and I got it muted. So that's all there is to it. It's actually outputting to the TV right now. Pretty simple. If we actually want to choose our input and outputs, we actually have to use Blackmagic Design's own control panel, or at least that's what I call it. You could call it the Intensity Shuttle control panel. But here we have video, I have component. Had I opted for HDMI though, you could go into audio and use the HDMI audio or you could use the analog input. So if you're doing game capture and you're plugging into the HDMI port, you could still do like a voiceover while you do game capture. Another cool thing is when you do conversions, if you're doing SD to HD, you can pillar box it. On the other hand, if, if, if you're doing it just the opposite way, if, if we go HD to SD, then you can letter box it. So it gives you all the options for broadcast, you know, compliant, you know, formats. So it's a pretty decent setup. You know, you do have your audio levels, too, that you can bring up the audio boosted or lowered a little bit as well. But this is, you know, like I said, where all the all the inputs and outputs are, are going to come up that are available. If I go back into component, you can also see we got video levels. We got IRE and stuff for Japan or USA. Within Media Express own software, it's you'd want to make sure the intensity shuttle is is selected. And then you go into preferences, and here's where you have the option to do on compressed or motion JPEG if you want. For motion JPEG, I wish it gave you the option to capture in 10 to 1 compression ratio, 5 to 1 compression ratio, and then 3 to 1 compression ratio. Obviously, you've got your option to capture on compressed as well, but having a few extra options would be nice. But that's really about it for the capture format. Now, if we go into the, you know, into the video format, we can see all the different, you know, 1080p, 1080i, 720. With the Media Express software, in order to stop recording audio, you actually just deselect the audio. Right now, it would actually just record video. There's no way to disable the recording of the video. If you click on it, it's still going to stay highlighted red. If I click on these, now we're actually going to record the audio. A lot of you are probably not going to have the icon for the intensity shuttle control panel right on your taskbar. I have a video that I'll provide a link to that will actually show you how to put it right on the taskbar. A lot of you will probably actually have to go to your Windows 7 or your Windows 10 you know, control panel and access it that way, but as you can see it's the exact same thing. To capture with Premiere Pro you can go over to the menu bar, you can go over to file and you can select capture or from the menu bar, you can go over to Window. You can also select Capture this way. There we see my Blu-ray player. Nothing all that great about it. But all we'd simply have to do is hit Capture by hitting Record. And now it's actually recording. And I might as well, you know, do a little bit of something with the interface of, of the Blu-ray player. But... Not much really to see. We can easily hit stop capture. Um, we'll call this test. We're testing, that'll work. And then we'll just hit OK. We'll close out out of here. And this is actually what I just captured. 
and will hear my voice over, I might as well, you know, do a little bit of something with the interface of, of the Blu-ray player. If you want to with Premiere Pro, you can actually take the capture panel and dock it right into the graphic user inter interface if you want. And that way, if you hit the tilt key, it becomes really super big. In order to capture with the Blackmagic Design Intensity Shuttle when using Premiere Pro, where you have the logging and settings capture, you have to go into settings, go into edit, and by default, you might be set on DV, HDV. You actually have to make sure you're on black magic. Select OK, and it should refresh itself. And that's all you simply have to do. You can actually do it another way as well, where it says capture here. If we actually right click and go into capture settings, the same interface pops up. You can actually select you know, 1080p, 720, you do on compressed motion JPEG. Now, like I said before, with the Blackmagic Design software, the Media Express, you have to make sure you select the, the right input and output within the Blackmagic Design control panel. In order to capture just audio or capture just video within Premiere Pro, where you have the logging tab, you just actually select audio or video. Or you can obviously record both audio and video, but it's that simple. In order to output with the Intensity Shuttle using Premiere Pro, you'd actually go to the menu bar, you'd go where Edit is, you'd go down to Preferences, and then go over to Playback. Here's where we see the Enable Mercury Transmit. It must be selected in order to output the Premiere Pro timeline to the Intensity Shuttle. You can see the Blackmagic playback is selected for audio. You could actually use the desktop audio or you could use the Blackmagic design product if you wanted. If you have a DV converter, you could use the audio from that as well. Here, the Blackmagic design product is selected for the video output. These are right here for the video outputs. You could obviously use your second computer monitor to output to as well. If we go into setup, this is where you're going to be able to actually output a 4K timeline using Premiere Pro and the Blackmagic Design Intensity Shuttle. That's about all we really need to look at for this particular panel. If we come over to the menu options over here, though, you're going to see you have the option to enable or disable the Mercury Transmit. If you're actually capturing with the Blackmagic hardware, and you have the Blackmagic hardware selected for output as well using the Mercury Transmit, you might want to disable this particular option while you're capturing. You can actually capture and edit simultaneously using Premiere Pro, but you can't really capture and playback at the same time using the Blackmagic Design product. It won't let you input and output at the same time. As a lot of you know, interlaced video doesn't actually show frames. It shows two separate fields, an odd and an even field. If someone was waving their hand and both fields were showing at the same time when you had your timeline paused, their hand would be jittering back and forth between both fields. The same would be true if somebody was swinging a tennis racket. Any place where there's motion, like a car moving, somebody running, if you have it paused, the timeline in Final Cut Pro, Premiere, or Avid, that will jitter. But if you have this option selected to eliminate jitter on pause, it'll actually only show one of the fields. And I really like having that option. I want to do a real quick recap and let people know the Blackmagic Design Media Express is really easy software to use if you just want to capture the video clips and play them back out to a broadcast monitor really super quick. Regardless of whether you use Media Express or Adobe Premiere Pro, you only have so many options within the software. You're going to have to actually use the Intensity Shuttle control panel to actually choose the input and output if you actually want to take a high definition timeline and rasterize the image down to play out an S video port on a standard definition monitor, the old CRT style monitor. That option would have to be selected using the Blackmagic Design Intensity Shuttle control panel. If you wanted to use the Intensity Shuttle for game capture, I wanted to state that it will not capture at 1920 by 1080 at 60 frames per second. 
It can capture at 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames per second, but I know people that do game capture want the high frame rate. You could drop down to 1280 by 720 and capture at 60 frames per second, or you could capture at 1080i. The motion would be smooth, but when you actually upload it to YouTube, you'd probably get interlacing artifacts. The Blackmagic Design Intensity Shuttle cannot play back at 1920 by 1080 at 60 frames per second either. If you have a timeline in Premiere Pro that's 1920 by 1080 at 60 frames per second, the Intensity Shuttle along with Premiere Pro will play back at a full 60 frames per second, but it'll be 1280 by 720 resolution. I'd rather Premiere Pro along with the Intensity Shuttle play back at the full 60 frames per second than drop down to 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames per second. The reason being is that motion graphics will play smoother at 1280 by 720p at 60 frames per second than at 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames per second. You can create a timeline that is 1920 by 1080 interlaced within Premiere Pro and drop in video clips that are 30 frames per second as well as 60 frames per second. They will look really smooth and playing out to broadcast quality equipment. You'll get more real-time special effects using a 1920 by 1080 interlaced timeline than if you use a 1920 by 1080 timeline at 60 frames per second. The motion graphics will look really super smooth in an interlaced timeline. The USB 3 version of the Intensity Shuttle has a list price of $199.99. Included in that price is a USB 3 cable. The product does get its power from that USB 3 cable. It's nice that it's set up that way so that you don't have to rely on third-party suppliers to supply an AC adapter. This product may or may not be the best bang for the buck when it comes to capturing game consoles. It does capture in the motion JPEG format as opposed to capturing in MPEG-2 or MPEG-4. So it will use more hard disk space than some of the other capture devices out on the market. As far as using it for live streaming, you can connect digital camcorders up to this as well as DSLR cameras. If your goal is to capture 10 or 20 VHS tapes, the Intensity Shuttle may not be your best bet. Just for the simple fact that it does want like a strong broadcast quality signal. Depending on your VCR, it may not actually do a good job at capturing. Some of the less expensive capture devices out there would probably do a better job than the Intensity Shuttle. If your VCR has time-based corrector built into it or a TBC, then the Intensity Shuttle will work just fine. But for most of you, just getting one of these cheap, inexpensive, you know, USB 2 compatible capture devices would probably be a better bet. I want to state that some of these other capture cards may also require a TBC or time-based corrector as well. If you are a freelance video editor, it is nice to see Hi8 tapes as well as VHS tapes on the old standard definition CRT monitors. The image just looks a lot more crisp and clean than seeing them on an HD monitor. The inexpensive capture cards are not going to let you output the video signal to professional broadcast quality equipment. The Intensity Shuttle works good for my needs, but I know it's not going to be for everybody. After watching this video, I hope you can decide if it's going to be a product that's going to be beneficial to your workflow or not. I hope that after watching this video, you'll be able to actually use the product to the best of its ability.